pre-processing done by the client, and all the computation is done at the server on the encrypted data, non interactively, in such a way that the client on your side receives the encrypted data uh, that corresponds to the encrypted uh, conditions for the impression. So the initial requirements uh, um, set a number of uh, covariates between 5 and 100, number of records between 5 and 1,000, the security parameters uh, uh, setting up the uh, APT security and relation based on the uh, performance, so the parameters mentioned in the EUC, speed, storage, and the cost, and then as a distribution. And as there were no specs about the VM that was going to be used to be, uh, evaluate the system, we assumed that it was one port for four gigabytes of memory according to last year's specs. So before starting to develop the solution, we um, we want some time to see which was the best uh, available option in the tier of the linear of the uh, logistic regression in order to implement it on encryption. And uh, we opted for the simplest solution just because of the limitations that the uh, homomorphic operations impose to being able to deal with polynomial operations. So even Newton's method implies the matrix conversion we have seen with the solution. Uh, and you can uh, either fix that Haitian uh, matrix that uh, has to be inverted or go with the most with simpler uh, gradient density that is what we eventually did. Uh, so, in this case, this gradient descent uh, imposes two uh, main challenges. The first one is the implementation of the uh, non linearity, so the simple function, and the second one is the fact that the scale factor gets incremented and this, the size of the matrix. Get implemented into the process being threatened. <coughs> so that means that uh, this value gets multiplied several times after each operation to keep increasing and increasing the scale factor. So, for that, in the first problem, that is the sigma function, we could use a polynomial approximation of this sigma function that would be a Taylor series expansion that is uh, centered at zero. But uh, we opted for uh, a burst in expansion, burst in polynomials. For uh, basis on the interval 0 1, which can change for the interval, and any function can be expressed as a 3D first and polynomial uh, in, this, uh, in the interval in which this basis is defined. So, as we can bound the inputs to this signal function at each iteration, then we can see which is the best interval and we can define this uh, first and polynomial to uh, produce this approximation. And we have checked that, for example, if you plot uh, the approximation for the Taylor expansion between minus 5 and 5, for different degrees of the, of the Taylor expansion, and the first and polynomial expansion, also for different degrees of minus 5 and 5, this first expansion is a much lower error uniform in the first well. So, going to the second challenge, which is uh, how to go with the graphic costs. Uh, due to the fact that we are working on the final in the wing, we have no direction, no solution, no solution. So, uh, the average step, the state factor and the size of this step gets increased and gets raised to our mean is the degree of the polynomial approximation multiplied by the signal function and also multiplied by the size, the number of rows in the matrix, and here it also intervenes the number of variants we have. So, the advantages that we can apply to that are either adjust the starting point, we use the complexity in the first iteration, the first iterations are the ones that have a more impact in the uh, in this scale factor and the drop in growth of the parameters. So we apply also the starting point of zero, so that the first iteration is very, very simple. And then uh, second we apply an adaptive step. So this step is this uh, coefficient here that is applied for each um, Iteration becomes adaptive, which means that it's increasing as we increase the number of iterations we perform, and therefore the first uh, steps don't need such a high precision to be sent. So we are again reducing the scale factor of the first iterations to the ones that are carried out with the higher response to the next iterations. Third, uh, what we can do is also restructure the input setting or reduce the scale accumulation by batching this, this set that we can see. Uh, and the number of variants is the one that has the factor that has the most data, which is the one that is exponentiated by D. 
but can, after the first operation, is also introduced with beta, and it's also present for our feed. So if we can decrease this n, we get a huge decrease in these scale accumulators. So instead of running the whole uh, set of records through the sleep regression, we divide the set of records in different batches, and we run these batches uh, that have a much smaller size, a much smaller number of records. And here we have two options, either apply one batch per iteration in cycle to uh, all, the, all the batches, apply one different batch per iteration, so that uh, the whole suppression sees the whole thing set, apply parallel batches, and then uh, make a fusion of the results of each of these sub the distinct regressions from each of the batches. So now we can go uh, to the cryptographic results, so the cryptographic solution uh, for these, we can apply the solve of encryption, for which we chose the common uh, encryption system. It's very time efficient. It allows only a limited number of uh, iterations because we are not applying bootstrapping, so it's not uh, available um, before. And the solution was not presented, presented as the, uh, before. And it has a large cyclic expansion and also a cost minimization at each product. But uh, the good thing is that we can apply to these strategies by packing the data numbers and producing this large expansion, and we can execute arithmetic circuits and we need to uh, resolve to uh, binary circuits. The second solution is based on polyphonic encryption. Uh, this uses the Torus Identica uh, High Water Script System, is a TFHG library that was also used by uh, teams. And it allows for a limited circuit depth, it has a very efficient bootstrapping. But uh, you know, it also has a large function, smaller than FE, but it's still large, and it forces to apply binary circuits. So we have to evolve uh, the information into a binary circuit and apply one bootstrapping after each binary gate. So that's a huge overhead. And the only optimization we want like here is reducing the circuit, optimizing the, the wires in the circuit. So we either go with arithmetic circuits with a binary depth or binary circuits with a literary depth. So going to the first solution, so the more encryption solution, uh, we use the FBN the lead library, uh, developed by two experts. And these are the uh, security parameters uh, used for this library for one iteration and for two iterations. As we have to define uh, up front which are the number of iterations that, that have to be performed, we need to set the two parameters to accept the one or two iterations with the, uh, the products we could get with the implementation we have. Because uh, due to the size of encryptions, there is a limited uh, number of encryptions that fit in memory uh, whenever we uh, have uh, one duration for two iterations. So this imposes also uh, a limitation due to the limited memory that we have. The, uh, uh, the improvement that we can apply here is uh, achieved by batching and packing. So by uh, running instead of one whole data set by running batches of the data set and dividing these batches, we can use the packing capacity of the group system in order to uh, encrypt each of the provisions of each of the batches in one of the slots, which is the slots. The group system is actually that one encryption here going for all the first provisions of all the batches, and therefore we can run all the distinct regressions for each of these batches in parallel thanks to the SIMD capabilities of the system. The only result that we get from here is uh, for each coefficient of beta of the uh, resulting uh, of this resulting vector, uh, this encryption holds all the coefficients for all the sub distributions run in this in all these batches. So the client only has to decrypt and fuse the results that we get to see the results. And packing capacity, of course, is equal to the polynomial uh, degree that we have here, but we will never go to that numbers with the uh, data sizes that we have uh, in this class. On the second solution, uh, by using this uh, TFHG library, is the fastest construction enabled library uh, up to now. So it was presented in Asia Grid uh, last year. It works over polynomials on the real torus, and uh, it allows for binary circuits, so basically add and control gates. So this means that this uh, operation has to be coded as a binary circuit, and the parameters that we get for 100 security are uh, bits, the 
description as student lab schools by swapping them to the ethnic descriptions. And the bootstrapping design is also for the three lights. It's also the small, smallest uh, bootstrapping matrix uh, for all the bootstrapping label uh, crypto systems available uh, today. Memory limitations here are not such a problem. You can just keep on the access of circuits in memory, and encryptions are not so good. They, uh, each of these encryptions is only one bit. And the optimization we want by is uh, working with a fixed point position, which is we are choosing 16 bits of position, and uh, it's a constant bit position, constant state factor, and reducing the circuits by avoiding wires with no input by the server. And we apply also patching to reduce the dimensionality. Here, patching is applied cyclically to all the to each iteration. Uh, all implementation aspects uh, relate to uh, the uh, setting for the uh, evaluation. And the VM specs uh, eventually were an uh, AWS instance uh, of uh, RTX Notch, which has four cores and 30 gigabytes of RAM. So with this increased RAM, we have much more space for uh, for certain gig encryptions. So we can run up to two uh, iterations with the so called encryption based uh, approach with the accuracy and we could re adapt the parameters for this uh, higher, uh, is bigger memory. As for multi core operation, so we now have four cores available, we will sort of an open uh, based implementation for the next applications. This is this product of the uh, data set by the beta and the transpose uh, data set times this uh, difference. These are the two main, uh, the bulk of the operation of each of the iterations. So this means that they can be very easily parallelized. And by doing this open MP validation, the performance can be have is virtually equal to the number of cores or threads uh, available in the, uh, in the processor. Uh, the problem that we have is with the fully concrete encryption solution, this DFHW is not quite safe, so it was a bit more complex to uh, get it parallelized and it would benefit a lot for having the core course available. Uh, the evaluation setup uh, was released in September 2013. Uh, it was a comparison with MATLAB uh, of feature action with one data dimension and the uh, data set with 18 variants and 1400 records. Is bigger than the uh, limit that we had before, so we get to uh, change the parameters in order to allow for the biggest, uh, bigger uh, data set. And we found across these checkbooks for an uh, interactive solution, uh, so we wondered whether this was allowed or not. Uh, so just in case, in order to protect uh, against that, uh, we resorted back to a one iteration approach for the sample of encryption that is valid both for, both for interactive and non-interactive solutions. And uh, in that case, uh, we can potentially substitute the bootstrap equation of the two form of the equation after each iteration. And this will uh, be much more beneficial because it will, uh, will decrease the, uh, the field size of the ciphers in order to cope with just one equation. So the achieved performance uh, for the evaluation data set here, comparing the self-form encryption solution with the full form encryption solution. In the self-form encryption, we can batch, so we are packing uh, 10 inputs in each of the encryptions. We can batch much more, but then the, the batch size would be much smaller. The precision of the result uh, would be great a lot. And we get, with just one equation, 694% uh, uh, of the um, AUC. So this increases on 6-7% uh, non and really test uh, uh, algorithm by the one up and running to the convergence. While for the fully solution, we get a lower uh, precision uh, by running, even if we run two iterations, this is due to the loss of precision that we get by using 16 bit uh, arithmetic instead of uh, the full uh, uh, scale that can be both with this, uh, with the sum of conversion. Uh, and ciphers, and again, the time here is just 15, roughly 15 minutes, while here is one of the time you uh, The main difference here is also the encrypted data size, so here we see the difference 
with respect to the site rates function in the sum total of the full quantum fraction. And this uh, will be uh, noticeable. These are the reciprocating practice course that uh, yeah, for the original system, for the original uh, solution with the model function, they're going to convergence and here is one equation of the full of the sum of the infection, and the other one is two equations of the fully of the infection solution. So we see that the sum of the infection uh, is really almost on par with the period of solution for the convergence, while the uh, even two uh, equations of the full quantum infection solution get a gap with respect to that uh, uh, convergence solution. The problem with this validation is that it doesn't take into account the scaling with number of covariates. So if we go to bigger data sets and we increase the number of covariates to 50 or 100, and we can see these are synthetic data sets where the uh, logistic compression is a good fit uh, for parameters. So the clear test algorithm reaches, may you see, almost 100 percent. That's the small graph is handled here. And the sum of infection solution, the small equation, which is again six to seven percent less than the period that started in convergence, both with 50 covariates and even with 100 covariates. And the good thing here is that by batching, we can make the processing time of iteration independent of the data set size. Because here we are still in the 15 minutes, meaning the, <coughs> the, the data set size is 50 covariates instead of 15. The sum of the function, the functional function solution, uh, conversely, doesn't achieve this uh, same level of accuracy. It um, remains quite low that due to the problem of precision, keeping a fixed precision of 16 bits. And even if we run five equations, uh, we keep a uh, poor performance compared to the sum of the function solution. And again, we find one equation here, so you find the degree two. The implementation of the zero function is quite high, so it's uh, almost 10 hours for just one equation. So, for concluding, uh, comparing these two uh, non interactive approaches for homotopic logistic regression and solar quantum regression for homotopic regression, you can see uh, that uh, in order to have some feasible solution, we need to adapt the EFS solution by the discovery of the approximation of the zero function, which we left. Uh, done uh, with the first and expansion approach, and we need to apply this packing and patching that needs to optimize performance and have some performance that uh, performance can be uh, really feasible. The key takeaways of the comparison in some form and in some form that some form it performs best for a predefined number of iterations with a better accuracy of performance, but uh, we need to find up front which is these number of iterations. While we can be is more flexible. But the problem of the precision, the limited precision, and the work performance can be a uh, very good uh, factor, even if we can run a limited number of, uh, number of uh, iterations. So, the best solution uh, for concluding is to use some form of equation flow approach and find the brush to replace this possibly bootstrapping for the initialization operation and balance for interactivity <coughs> and promote capacity for achieving best performance. And that's all. So, if you want to uh, check more info about uh, our products and our solutions for uh, protection of medical material data, you can visit our web page. Or you can go also to the Genome Privacy uh, web page that is a uh, comprehensive uh, list of all the works and <coughs> groups active in the topic of genome privacy. And of course, uh, what we're going to have tomorrow in Group 5. They will present there uh, the first uh, operational solution for the new price function separation of uh, distributed clinical uh, That's all. Thank you. So, maybe this is a question to, to reorganize it that time. So, this morning there was the presentation of the results, which I remember is like 15 minutes. Uh, and the AUC is about 0.65. So is that using the FHE or is the SHE? The SHE with only one iteration. Yeah. So for the SHE of, uh, sorry, I missed the point. Uh, what was the approximation of six point function we used? It was the, the first time of the DVD. The first time of the DVD.
Uh, we also have a special issue for uh, this year. Maybe uh, our candidate journal is an IEEE transaction um, depending for the secure uh, computing. And uh, this is a peer reviewed uh, journal. And the submission deadline is uh, January uh, 31st, uh, in, sorry, 2018. Yeah. And the, the notice of decision is in March 20, uh, 31st. And uh, we will move to the next section for the concluding remark. So, 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 and so, 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 Looking at what we are doing now, and, and on the, you know, just uh, the, in the biomedical privacy using home of encryption, using multi-party computing, and then what we demonstrate is the product, and uh, we can using home of free home of encryption, and, and we can we can then we show you know just uh, training a machine learning model over you know just uh, uh, over encrypted data is feasible, right? We made a baby step, but we draw this direction. And um, it's very exciting. And also, and we show the du du duplicated data across multiple uh, mutual untrusted parties can, can, is completely feasible, right? And, and we are doing this in our, our very realistic scale. We are, we are doing this over 300,000, you know, just uh, on the record. And we can do it within seconds, right? You know, start within seconds. So it is a very realistic. And um, we also made the first step of how do we support privacy protection. We 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 using SGX and uh, we show you know just and, and, and for the first time using this uh, and uh, you know hardware support platform to do a data intensive computing for genomic and the privacy protection for biomedical computing is feasible, right? And the obvious is demonstrated what we need we are moving forward. So the question is and and uh, what are we going to do next, right? And so then some natural step is very much like incremental and. Uh, from what we've already done. We made it the first step, we, we were doing logistical regression. So how about to become more ambitious, we try artificial neural network. <laughs> <laughs> we can try very simple neural network. <laughs> See if we can do that next time. And uh, how about, you know, just and, and for, the, for the scalable and uh, deduplication, for, for, for GA4J for network. So how do you guys think? Do you think, you know, just that we have personalizing the technique we already have is very close to practice, right? So how about make a step further to make it a practical? And then, and then, and then we need to deploy all these things and working with GA4J. And that to have a real world impact, right? SMC, really exciting. And uh, also for trust execution environment, do we have to have any security guarantee, right? And, and, and right now the guarantee is quite standard. But everyone knows those SGX platform has some weakness, particularly in terms of side channel, right? And the side channel, the question I would have is uh, side channel is very difficult to quantify. And uh, the, the, the question is if we do genomic biomedical data analysis, uh, and the, the other side of channel problem there indeed, uh, you know, just uh, becomes so serious that we didn't worry about it. Or in the real world, you just kind of think out anything. Right. And so side channel is something very scary, very scary, but in the meantime, so, and uh, in the real world, uh, oftentimes the, the things could be less serious than we than the security researcher hope want to demonstrate. A prominent example is the cloud computing, right? And uh, theoretically, if, if we have two virtual machines on the same, you know, this on the same cloud machine running the cloud, one machine can use this cache-based side channel, L1, L2, last type of cache to figure out even the secret key and running inside another virtual machine. <laughs> That's what people demonstrate, right? And across virtual machine attack. But in the real world, you know, just uh, no one cares about this. Right? And, uh, and uh, Amazon doesn't care. And I don't think any in real world people demonstrate that you know, on a working Amazon, Amazon server. And uh, they can co-locate that server, co-locate that VM with a target VM and figure out the secret key. No one 
this. Everything done is in an ideal world, right? So the, the, the question is, and, and indeed they publish a bunch of paper, including my group, we publish a paper on SGS and channel. And we, you know this, and, and we discover actually a bunch of channel. And so, so the question is how realistic how realistic these things will be. In fact, it could become, right? We don't know. And we want to understand. We want to understand and the biomedical genomic settings. Yeah, so so that this could be something we can try to explore next time, right? Let's see if indeed this is right. If it's not, not an issue, so so you know one cannot guarantee as Jack, this hardware platform can security guarantee they can provide it to biomedical genomic data analysis. With these things in mind, then I think it's a, it's a huge step forward because we can do a lot of things with this offline trust at the time. Right? And uh, it, it, it is interesting. And also a big question is, is that anyway we can kind of combine SGX, offline trust at the time, together with fully homework encryption. <laughs> and we do something very unique. And, and, and we, we can protect things we you know, just we can protect them for other things. We can treat it, you know, just and and and, and, and you know, just uh, uh, and security. We can build up balance between security and uh, utility and uh, performance. Right. This is all these are very interesting questions. So the next is topic. So I, I want to get you guys up here and pick up your mind. So how do you pick up you guys' brain? How do you guys think about what we can do, right? So, so there are a few things in our mind, and uh, for example. <laughs> Maybe you can try those uh, secure generation of complicated machine learning models over encrypted data. But like data, can we do something like that? You know, and, and, and it's not that complicated. Maybe just just one layer, you know, just a uh, standard neural network can we do something like this. It's challenging, right? You need a big step forward. And then you can have a cloud if you want. <laughs> and uh, side channel resistant and SGX, but very confusing. It's just very some wild idea, right? And, and, and we ask people to to do, for example, and uh, mismatching inside inside a cloud, inside SGX, right? Outside, we use the standard page-based side channel attack, and see if we can figure out information. If can we can make it work in a way that outside we cannot figure out any information, but in the meantime, you can have a computing done correctly within a very short amount of time. Can you do this, right? And uh, also for the, you know, just uh, adverse learning. It's a very interesting machine learning topic, right? There are a lot of biomedical, bioinformatics, computing tasks. It's a machine learning task, right? You build a model which train all patients' data. So what happens is if, if, if someone doing this uh, inference and, and figure out, using the query to figure out, you know, you know just what patient's record looks like. So it's a problem for machine learning already. And do we need to worry about these things? If we need to worry about these things, so how are we going to you know, defend against this attack? Protect the patient's data. In the meantime, so we make this machine learning algorithm work and still work. Right? And this could be a, a potential direction. Right? And so, how do you guys think? I, I think I'm not the only, the first, only person to throw up the random idea. You can propose some other idea of your own. So, how do you guys think? Any other suggestion, topic? Suggest the topic? Any other suggestion? Yeah, so, yeah, right. so first of all, I would like to thank you guys for setting up this uh, China event. Um, fabulous work and as people Thank you for having me. It's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really a lot of work and I'm very impressed with how much you know the workforce you put it into this. And this certainly brings uh, additional uh, credibility to all this effort because we can show uh, you know, we have benchmarks to end users and stuff that is very close to things that can be deployed. Right? Mm -hmm. Almost we have the stage of our proof of concept. Yes, it's very important. And so, I might think that the idea would be to continue our that, that line and, in particular, uh, reinforce the connection with ML. Mm -hmm. right? So, the machine learning stuff yeah. has to be taken into account. Yes. And I, I think, of course, uh, as you know, Progress has been made in that direction, but there's still a lot of work to be, to be made in, in, in that sense. In particular, to show that software-based solutions, as opposed to hardware-based solutions, are competitive, yeah. even for these kind of challenging uh, tasks. And, and this is still not clear to me. Yes, yes. And, so th and this is exactly, I think this is exactly the community that can say, Yes or no, or in what case it makes sense, yes. for the price, and so on and so forth. 
Yeah, and, and, and particularly, you know, just and I think the form of off encryption. And if we need some offline computing, you already can do a very good job. Exactly. Right? I'll, I'll ask you guys demonstrate. Right? But, but for online computing, maybe if we do need performance, and we do need speed, can we, you know, just make SPX secure? <laughs> but we use SPX to do these things. It's kind of a combination. Maybe, you know, these two things can combine together, right? You, you, you know, get with the Intel's help. And uh, this SGX model is offline trusted part. It's offline trusted part. You have to trust Intel, but Intel is not involved in every transaction, right? So, so how to use crypto matter to make these things more realistic? Right? And, and, and more usable. And I think there are a lot of questions we need to answer. Right? And, and because for biomedical, bio, bioinformatical community, we do need this. Also, you know, just and, and the guarantee that you know privacy preserving computing also. Right. And we don't need this capability. How are we going to combine these things together? And it's going to be something very interesting. Web hardware can help us, with software can help us. And also, all this machine learning algorithm, right? And the, the doing machine learning over encrypted data. Also, looking at those, those bioinformatics and the genomic community, we, we use so many machine learning algorithms. We have so many machine learning models. Do they become information? If you're making your, your machine learning, maybe if you're training the model publicly available, right? Can I just simply query this model? And a big out of vision data can do something like this. Right? You know, this is, is a highly interesting stuff. You know, this is the frontier. It's the frontier. You know, this is now we do have a machine learning algorithm. And the aerospace, they can build a building a new network, a deep new network that you so you can carry in your target model you know, and a big out, try to figure out right? and, and this is something we need to look into. And other suggestion. No, you can have maybe about the arrangement which you mentioned. Uh, so the, the four bullets or standalone or the other layers, I think we know the answer. Right? It's, uh, just this year we have been and for the first time we, we have aligned, you know, I dash engine of pride, ng 4 gh uh, and the fact that the, the three things are happening together in conjunction with the ASAG uh, annual event clearly brings more people and brings more attention to end users and do exactly what is needed, right? We and I think we should not we have done enough on the side of the CS community. Okay? They it's not so much interest anymore because on the front of the CS communities is well understood that the tools exist and they can be applied to this uh, to this kind of product. The next step as you really pointed out is to convince end users and I see uh, at least in Europe I see a lot of work that has to be done in terms of persuading, but first of all, informing, okay. even then to all things are possible. Right? I talk again and again with people say, can you really do this at that speed? That people are flabbergasted. Like how much progress has been made, right? Because they still believe that homomorphic encryption does not work in practice. It works at that time. It works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. So we have to <clears throat> convince, we have to convey, uh, we have to evangelize uh, all, all these people. And so we have to be close those events, right? And and so well this year it works not really well. So tomorrow at General Pride, the end of the event we are going to talk about the arrangements and see what uh, what would happen and how to bring this at some point of the event to, to, to Europe uh, you know and, and, and so on. But this is sort of something and the bottom line to me especially for the continent is, is really this notion of co-location with a biomed or bioinformatics uh, event. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, just together with bioinformatics and the bioinformatics or, or biomedical event is really be the right thing to do, right? Because and, and there are a lot of people here from the security and privacy community. So, and we, we, need to say, we need to show the biomedical bioinformatics community what our technique looks like and what our technique can help them to better protect their data and their system. Any suggestion? I, I think it's a good one. Oh, um, I'm just wondering. How the picture might change. Um, NIH is actually seriously considering um, releasing the open access summary level statistics on genome data. It's not a done deal, but there is a, a request for information out right now, and I believe that the deadline is in a week or so, asking for people's comment on that proposal. So there's, um, you know, I, I can't say if it's going to happen or not, but it's, you know, getting a lot of discussion. So, so a real frequencies for studies, you know, they're published in papers and they appear in you know supplementary materials. 
but they might actually be released um, through the gap. And I'm curious, how does that change our conversation or potentially what we might want to think about? So things like lit frequencies and effect uh, values and all the statistics that are calculated around GWAS type data. Are your frequencies you were released before, right? <laughs> what? Are your frequencies you were released before, right? Now we want to release it again. They were released in 2007, and then there was a Homer attack, yeah. and pulled back and pulled access for a study. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, 10 years later, there's the thought that um, they should be, perhaps be released again. Release again, because the, 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 the privacy risk is minimal. Right. Well, that's the debate. Yeah. What is the privacy <laughs> risk? What is the harm? And so it seems like that affects um, you know, the thinking of this group about the you know, privacy landscape. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. About another thing, see, sir, and uh, that is my personal opinion. Right? And, you know, this, and, 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 and from, I'm a security researcher, right? I'm a technical person. So what we are looking at is, is we are trying to to looking at the genomic data, looking at the real exposed data, real systems that we can access to understand what's the real threat to them, mm -hmm. to, to the genomic. Well, we don't want to overprotect the data, right? Because if we overprotect the data, we will prevent the, the you know, progress of biomedical and, and genomic research, which are the most exciting things, right? And, and, and you know, looking, looking back at the history, and, and we, may, we may, you know, just uh, we may invent an automobile, right? And then, so people first think about it is how to make it faster, right? People, people never thought about how to protect the drug in the first place. Uh, only later on, when the automobile become very reasonable, and then we think, yeah, yeah, we, we need to put a cell back there, we need to put air back there, and then we protect it. Just out of everything, the first thing to think about is how to protect the passenger instead of building up the car. Then we wouldn't have automobile, right? So, so, so in, in, in this perspective, to, to have a sense move forward, you know, just and, and uh, you know, just and uh, looking at uh, and uh, trying to don't trying to overprotect anything, you know, just and, and which is good things. But in the meantime, of course, we need to consider because healthcare data captures patients' information highly sensitive. So, so how are we gonna come from this community? How are we come up with an in depth understanding of the system to find out the realistic attack and then the, the right. assumption. You know, just a real world assumption. Right. This is very important. And so, I mean, there's some concepts. I don't know if it's appropriate for this challenge, but you know, some ideas of interest in which you're pointing to is, you know, the idea of measurement of true risk. So, because because a lot of what's happening, you know, outside of the privacy or security community is more seat of the pants, you know, estimation, kind of qualitative estimates of risk, and they're pretty crude sometimes. So the idea of bring, bringing um, to the policy people uh, an understanding of how risk can be measured in pragmatic, fast, and effective ways that don't seem too burdensome. You know, and so just shining that light um, on the judgments that are being made right now about what's safe or not safe. You know, I think the first thing that would happen is that we would see how we're overprotecting and underprotecting at the same time we could end up with a more systems-oriented, systematic, and truly protective uh, risk balancing. So the other part of that is just the ability to model the actors, the social uh, bad actors. So you know, Brad Nalen saw a little bit of that with um, you know game theory type kind of model. It's very very preliminary, and, you know, very, but it's, it seems like an area of opportunity to get to that point where you could bring it all together. You know, the computer science, the policy. The, the genomics and biomedical science it seems like that's a real opportunity. Yeah, wonderful. Actually, for this competition, we are trying to, to you know, just uh, and, uh, and organize the competition and set up the training tasks based on the real world problem. For example, last time we treated a vegan, so we will review the vegan, you know, just as a, a competition task. And then and this year we will have GFOGH and the and, and, and DB competition, which is a uh, which are real world, real world problem, right? And, uh, so I think my opinion is if you should be about the individual sensitive information while a lot of uh, utility in our research is about the population or core level, 
information. So uh, all the computing actually is in the spirit of trying to explore uh, uh, using critical version mechanism, for example, learning a model, getting the parameters on thousands of samples, uh, while not revealing individually identifiable information. So I think this is directly along the way of uh, protecting uh, individual uh, information while allowing some utility to be extracted. But really, next step is to quantify the risk so we know like, to what degree uh, we can strike the right balance between these two. Yeah, definitely. But the quantification of you know the you know, quantification of the security risk and the, and the, and the quantification of the security itself is a long thing, uh, you know, a problem, very difficult problem. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, add to uh, Heidi's comments that um, you know, one thing that is very valuable is um, often people are dealing with private data and they're you know, assigned to the field of privacy consents and they're trying to keep the data um, private, but often there may be some technical solutions that just make it a little easier. I mean, you know, just, you know, people are trying to keep the data private, but maybe there's ways for them to set up their calculations internally to track the private data to be clear the levels of privacy of things and so forth, and just or secure their computer systems in an easier way. I mean, like, you know, these are sort of very practical things, but we need quite a few Other comments? Yeah, and uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, another thing is, uh, and, and we are, my important thing is, uh, and uh, the purpose of the workshop is we want to and uh, build up the community right together with uh, and, and the and the prime and, and uh, we all this workshop we're trying to build up a larger community so and uh, so important things is that not only you know we have this workshop but we need some we need some you know just uh, deliverable we need to produce something right and the important product in production, I can see here is that uh, and, and we, we want a repository and you build up some particular designs in the middle, we see some packages very close to practice. And, and, and then we have the repository, we have the tools. And if you are willing to open source your, your tools, or you are willing to work with us, and to turn these things into the real world protection, this would be fantastic. I would encourage you guys to do so. Right? And, uh, and also, you know, just, and, uh, so the other thing is, is you know, just, uh, we are doing something, for some important, if we can highlight some problem. And uh, which I think uh, is persistent interest of the whole research community, right? Maybe we can come up with a benchmark. And, 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 and in the past a few years, indeed, we have benchmarks very much like we, we did ourselves. <laughs> if we have a persistent benchmark, right? Well, a, a problem people are always interested, or, or people have interest for a long time. And I, I think this would be interesting, right? And uh, so. And the, the, the third thing is even more ambitious. Do we have this technique deployed open source? That can we work with the GA4GH? You can know, working with Beacon to even deploy these things to the real world, to have a real world impact. Right? So, so that's what we are thinking. We want to build a community, we want to have a real world impact. Right? So, any, any input? Um, I just, you said that you noticed, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows this thing. Um, if, if there's any. Um, um, opportunity within your network, people that you know, or uh, who might benefit from small business applications uh, in privacy and security, as you know, there's some healthcare data. It would be great if you could uh, point that person to me. Um, I'm developing that portfolio in human genome, and we're really eager to get you know more strong applications in that area. So the small the SBIR, SDPR program at NIH. Um, is you know an opportunity for um, applications in that area. Great, and for the competitor, if you want to make some money out of your competition product, that's <laughs> ultimately. That's a small business. <laughs> so I think um, we should thank the organizers. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, so that's the end of the 
Oh, do you want to understand it? actually the local organizer? Yeah, yeah. The for all the food and arrangements. And I hope to see you next year. Hopefully, we will have a our next challenge. Thank you. We definitely will have our next challenge. <laughs> also, thanks to the support from uh, yeah, also, <laughs> 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 <laughs